Hello and welcome. I am your host Vortex for MobileMusicPro.com, your home for mobile music production. And this video today is especially created for beginners wanting to get started with mobile music production on the iPhone and iPad. We'll be giving you our top tips to get you up and running as quickly as possible. Now today we're going to be working with Steinberg's Cubasis 3, which is our DAW of choice, our digital audio workstation of choice over here at Mobile Music Pro. Now there are a number of digital audio workstations out there to choose from in the iPad and iPhone ecosystem, but we prefer Cubasis over here because of its ease of use and its legendary Steinberg quality. And thanks to awesome viewers like you, our channel continues to grow. So thank you so much for all the thumbs up and all the likes. We really, really appreciate it. Every single like helps get more people introduced to mobile music production. So we really, really, really appreciate it. And remember folks, if you do want to support content like this, make sure to check out our Patreon at patreon.com slash mobile music pro. So with that introduction aside, let's get right into getting started with Cubasis 3. All right, hello and welcome everybody to this Cubasis 3 tutorial. Let's go ahead and get started by discussing the user interface. As you can see at the top, we have our standard transport controls where we can play, stop, and record. And we can scrub through the playhead like this. We can loop the playhead wherever we want by adjusting the loop parameters at the top here by dragging. We can drag the left here and we can drag the right and to loop a specific region, we simply long tap on a region. Okay, the next thing we'll be discussing is the tracks. As you can see, they are right here, labeled 1 through 13. We can click on each individual track, and they're named kick, hi-hat, snare, toms, and so forth. And you can actually expand these tracks by a pinch. So we can give you less area or more area to see. And as you expand them, you'll see that more controls get exposed, such as the record button, the solo button, and the mute button. You can change the color of these tracks at any time by clicking on one of the tracks and then click the color tab over here, and you can change it like this. These colored squares over here on the side, as you can see, each one I'm clicking here, these are called regions. These are made up of either MIDI or audio information. As you can see, these are MIDI regions here with all these notes, and these are audio regions here, as you can see with the audio waves. To select a region, you simply tap on it. Once the region is selected, you can do a few quick automated tasks, such as adjusting the volume by grabbing the top left or the top right hand grip. To see the contents of one of the MIDI regions, you simply double tap on that region. This will bring up the MIDI editor, which we'll get into in a second. Or if you double tap on an audio region, you'll be able to open up the audio editor. You can also expand both the MIDI editor and the audio editor at any time. Just double tap on the audio to bring up the audio editor and tap and hold on the top region. Okay, the next thing to discuss in the user interface is the top three buttons in the top left hand corner, the media bay, the keys, and the mixer. The media bay will allow you to open and view and close and save your projects. You can duplicate them as well from here. The keys will allow you to play your various instruments. And you can expand that keyboard with the grips at the above that. Expand or contract the notes. And there is a pads button as well that you can use for chords. Each one of these chords can be edited very easily by clicking on the edit button above the chords and you can change them like so. The next button to discuss is the mixer. As you can see here you have three different choices, the small, medium, or large, each one giving you more and more information. And as always in, within Cubasis 3, you can grab the top of the window and drag that to be full screen or as large or as small as you'd like. So to get started in Cubasis 3 with your very own brand new project, we would click the media bay, which will bring up the window at the bottom, and we would click new project at the bottom left. We'll just give it a name, click OK. And here we have a brand new empty workspace ready to go. 
From here you can start adding your tracks by clicking the add button and you can choose either audio, MIDI or group. Now that you're familiar with the user interface, we can start recording something into Cubasis. But before we do that, let's show you some of the instruments. So to check out the instruments, let's first add a new MIDI track. We'll click Add at the bottom, and then we'll click MIDI. Let's expand these track options by viewing our panel information on the left. To do that, we click the arrow at the very top. This will actually expand and contract our track options. From here, we can actually click on the acoustic piano to bring up our instrument. You'll also notice that there is an icon underneath the track with a little piano. You can tap on that as well to bring up your instrument. As you can see, whenever you add a new MIDI track, the default instrument will be the piano, which is inside of the microsonic instrument. The microsonic instrument has a bunch of different presets from pianos to drums to guitars. We can view those by clicking on the list browser button over here, which will expose all of the presets for this particular microsonic instrument, as well as there's categories at the bottom here that you can browse through that says piano, keys, organ, and so forth. Now to change instruments, we would just scroll to the top here and click the back button right above the presets, right where it says microsonic, there is a left arrow right above here and we'll click the left arrow. This will get us back to a menu where we can choose no instrument, audio unit, interrap audio, classic machines, mini sampler, micro loop, or that microsonic instrument. Again, clicking on the microsonic will bring back all the presets for that microsonic. If we go back to this menu and choose Microlug, we have all the presets inside of this Microlug instrument. So if we click on Factory Presets, we'll find that we can see all the presets here from this particular instrument. And if you don't have a MIDI keyboard hooked up like we do now, you can always click the Keys button at the top, and this will show you both your instrument and the keys at the same time. <laughs> Okay, now that you know how to find instruments, let's go ahead and try to record an instrument. Okay, we have our bright piano pulled up. We're going to go to the top of the transport controls. We're going to tap the loop button so that we can drag our playhead to where we want to be looped. We're going to loop a four bar region, as you can see here. We're going to tap on the metronome and then we're Okay, that has recorded. We'll untap our metronome there. And if we want to edit the notes in this region, we can just double tap it and that will bring up our MIDI editor. It's within this MIDI editor that you can go through and actually edit the individual notes. You can remove and add them. And now we're going to show you how to bring in a pre-made loop from Steinberg on here. Cubasis has a bunch of bunch of loops that you can choose from. So we're going to click add, we're going to click audio, expand that out and we'll click our media bay. We'll go to the audio section and we'll go to drum loops. And as you can see, there is a bunch of drum loops to choose from. They have included a variety of different types of styles and genres at different BPMs. So let's go ahead and pick one of these to choose one of these loops. You can either double tap it or long tap it and drag it into your project. If you'd like to edit the actual individual wave, you can just double tap that to bring up the wave editor. In addition to a wide variety of sounds inside of their microsonic and microlug instruments, and in addition to the loops that they have, they also come with a bunch of default effects that you can apply to any one of your tracks. To both view your previously inserted effects and apply new effects, we click the Insert Effects tab on the left hand side. And by default, we can see that the Channel Strip and the Studio EQ effects are in here, but they are not enabled. To enable them, we click the button on the left. And to view them, we click the E button on the right. This will bring up the effect. As we can see, we click E here. This will bring up the channel strip. And clicking E here will bring up the Studio EQ. And just like with all of the instruments inside of Cubasis 3 having a bunch of different presets for you, the effects as well have presets so that you can get started quickly and easily. As you can see here, here are some of the factory presets for the EQ.
So as you can see here, Cubases comes packed with a bunch of instruments, each containing a bunch of presets, and a bunch of internal effects with each of those containing factory presets as well. Everything that you really need to get started, to get up and running with mobile music production on your iPad or iPhone. All right, we really hope you enjoyed that quick introduction into Cubases 3 and our top tips to help you get started on your musical journey. And if you enjoyed this, remember to stay tuned to the channel because we'll be having more in-depth Cubases 3 videos to come in the future, as well as cook-up videos where we walk you through how to create songs in specific genres all within Cubases 3. So thanks again for joining us, everybody. And as always, of course, if you are new to the channel, make sure to subscribe, make sure to hit those thumbs up. Every single thumbs up and like gets more people into mobile music production, so we very much appreciate that. And again, guys, if you want to support more content like this, make sure to check out our Patreon at patreon.com slash mobilemusicpro. Until next time, we'll see you later.